Welcome to my video about the Carrera Intercity Folding Bike. The video is quite long. Um, the first half is kind of like a walk around and a review of the bike and the second half is mainly POV footage from my action camera while I'm riding the bike. But I'll try to leave some timestamp links in the video description below so you can refer to the areas that might interest you if you don't want to you know, watch the whole thing. So I've got an unboxing part in this video because I actually couldn't find this bike in stock from Halfords at the time I needed it which was around August 2020 but luckily I managed to find a seller on eBay with some stock. However that meant the bike would be delivered in the manufacturer's box without being set up unlike when collecting from Halfords where they offer a free build option which means they you know set up the gears and check the bolts and you know give the bike a once over to make sure it's like fit to ride anyways if you were to have the bike delivered without it being quote built then this is how it would arrive it's quite nicely packed and protected with various plastic buffers cardboard padding and zip ties this is the first look with all the packing off comes from the factory with the steering handle folded in between the wheels so it implies it was designed to be folded like this I have to say it looks very neat compared to the other 20 inch wheel folding bikes I've seen where the handlebars just hang on the outside some plastic caps still on the hub and seat tube I think I'll keep the seat tube one for storage um, it will come in handy you know protecting any wooden floors I've taken all the plastic caps and the zip ties off now the box states the weight of the bike should be 13.7 kg let's check it out with my travel luggage scale thing which is accurate to about 100 grams Yep, close enough. Here's a close up of the handlebar and the folding lock clasp thingy. Note how the brake levers and the bell are angled to allow the bike to close properly. The frame of the bike is T6061 aluminium, so it should be corrosion resistant and keeps the weight down. I like the colour scheme of the bike, apart from the mud guards, which I think would have looked better if they were black. This bike comes with a quality 8 speed gear mechanism from Shimano and is from the Altus series, which I believe is a step up from the entry level Tawny. I had to fine tune the gears myself because the bike wasn't set up by a shop, but it was easy enough following some other YouTube tutorials. Pedals are also easily folded, even with one hand. The handlebar angle can be adjusted easily by quick release clamps. The height of the handlebar can also be similarly adjusted. You may notice I've left some of the packaging on the fork on for now, as that is where the handlebar rests when folded. I found that the paint on the bike is easily scratched as I've managed to already scratch the rear wheel frame when attempting to figure out how to fold the bike. So this is something to watch out for if you do decide to buy this bike and maybe put some masking or insulation tape around the frame in the crucial bits when you're first practicing just to make sure you don't damage the bike. So my bike came with no air in the tyres. So according to the specs on the tyre wall, the recommended range is between 40 to 65 PSI. This is about 2.8 to 4.5 bar. I generally tend to pump up tyres by feel and I stopped when the foot pump became too hard to press on anymore. And it came to about 45 PSI and the tyres felt really hard. So I don't think I'll ever push to 65 PSI.
now for some drama. So this actually happened towards the end of my very first long ride. When I was attempting to cross the road, the handlebar steering column just suddenly folded down. On closer inspection, it appears the quick release clamp on the steering column was too loose to start with and the vibration from riding had caused it to come loose. Now this may not have been an issue if the bike had been checked over by a shop and set up properly prior to sale. But because I had bought it shipped in the manufacturer's box, I didn't have it as tight as it should have been. As this was my first folding bike, I was none the wiser really, and on the first ride the clamp seemed tight enough. But now I realise it should have been even more tight so as not to vibrate loose on its own. When I was first riding the bike, I was able to close the clamp with a single finger, but after tightening it, which I'll show you how to do in the next clip, I now need to use the force of my whole palm in order to close it. Since then I've ridden about 30 miles and the steering column issue hasn't happened since and the handlebar actually feels more solid and I probably should have really picked up on the fact that there was some play in the handlebars initially but this is now gone since tightening that nut. There is a rubber lock thing at the top of the clamp handle but I think this is a secondary safety feature. Um, your clamp should be tight enough not to you know unfold on its own or vibrate loose on its own this is how I tighten the steering column clamp fold out the column to access the nut behind the clamp You'll need a 10mm spanner I gave it about 3 quarter turns until I could feel the clamp handle stiffen I'll be sure to check this regularly as part of my regular maintenance checks from now on in case it loosens over time. Now back to reviewing the bike. I'll now cover the steps I've settled on to fall down the bike. I've had to figure this out myself since the manual that came with the bike was more or less useless. It just covered general safety tips that could apply to any bike but had nothing specific about how to fold the bike or unfold the bike. Anyways, so this is the steps I've settled on. First step is optional. You can fold the pedals in if you really need the bike uh, taking up less width than usual. But on most occasions, I don't find it necessary unless it's going to be in a tight gap or something. But I'll show you how to fold the pedals all the same. Just push in from the outer edge and turn it up or down. Next, unclamp the seat post and drop it down. If you clamp right at the top of the seat post, the seat will move freely. But if you want it to stay fixed, just raise it up slightly where the tube gets thicker, then clamp it shut. Next, Make sure the handlebar brake levers and bell is angled at least 45 degrees or more towards the ground and the handlebar height is shortened to around at least the 7 to 8 mark on the steering column. I'm 5'7 so for me this range is comfortable enough to ride at so I have mine set like this anyway permanently when I'm riding so I save a few steps. But if you're much taller, you may need to always have to do these extra steps of angling the handbrake levers down and putting the height of the handlebar down as well if you want to put the handlebar in between the wheels.
Now it's time to fold the middle. I find it easier to be on the opposite side of the folding clamp so I can fold the bike away from my body. So make sure you're on the side of the bike that has the gearbox derailleur. Undo the middle folding clamp by pushing the locking switch in the direction it says open and holding it with your thumb while you pull out the lever. But before you begin to fold in the body of the bike, use your right hand to secure the handlebars flat against the front wheel. This ensures that when you're closing the front wheel against the rear wheel, it aligns properly and the handlebar doesn't slam into the frame or doesn't block the ball from connecting with the clasp. I find out the hard way, that's how I got those scratches before. Because the ball clasp locking thing that keeps the bike folded is quite stiff, gently pushing in the bike won't do. I find I need to fold in the bike and stop until it's about at a 90 degree angle, then swing it in in one swift motion so that there is enough momentum to drive the lock in. This works whether the bike stand is up or down, as you can always tuck the stand in afterwards. Provided you've twisted your brake levers down and lowered the handlebar height to at least around the 7 mark on the handlebar and have the handlebar gripped flat against the front wheel fork, it will just slam in nicely. Once locked in, the folding lock is really secure and strong and you can lift the bike up on its side and it will still stay folded and it won't open up, so that's really convenient. Also when folded the bike will stay quite stable standing up using the combination of the two wheels and the seat post. Now because of the fact the handlebars can be folded in between the wheels and the folding clasp is really strong, this bike can actually somewhat be rolled around folded quite comfortably if you extend the seat post and use it as a handle. Beware though, you need to be mindful when stopping and letting it down because the seat post is still up and it won't be stable when you put it down and there is the risk of the chain ring or chain hitting the ground. So you'll need to lower the seat post and lock it in again when you decide you want to stop rolling and put the bike down. Another thing to be aware of is you can only roll it forward due to the freewheel rotation. If you drag it back the pedals rotate and eventually jam into the body. Here I'm lucky in this demo the pedals jammed in such a position that the bottom pedal stopped the chain ring touching the ground but you get the idea. Now onto unfolding the bike. Because the clasp that keeps the bike folded is quite strong, which is a good thing, you need to use a snap motion to unfold the bike, just like you need when closing it. I find it best to grab one hand on the luggage rack and the other on the top end of the handlebar, so you avoid touching the tires which could be dirty and wet, and then sharply tugging each end in opposite directions. Unfold the bike and lock down the middle clamp, which just clicks shut, which is nice. Then I like to engage the stand to keep the bike stable, and while down there open up the pedals if you had decided to fold them. Then it's time to prop up the handlebar and secure the steering column clamp. If you've watched the earlier clip in the video, you'll understand I'm a bit OCD about this part now. Make sure the clamp is really tight and engage the rubber safety lock too by pushing it down. Then raise the seat post. There are markings on the back so you can bring it up to your settings again quite easily. Lastly, you'll need to adjust the handlebar height and angle 
if needed. For me, I find it comfortable riding with the handlebar height around the seven to eight markings and it's still short enough for the bike to be folded so I don't need to readjust this when opening up the bike. Now the bike is unfolded and set up I'll just give you a brief walk around tour. The handlebar is a straight bar which I like. There are some bikes that have a u-shape sort of handlebar. It has sporty mountain bike type end grips and the Shimano Revo shift shifter on the right. On the left you have a bell which comes with the bike. I found this quite disappointing, it jingles loosely when riding and it's rather big. So when folding the bike you have to make sure it's out of the way. You can see some dents on it where I've got the alignment wrong <laughs> when trying to fold the bike. Lower down the bike it has V brakes, looks like Pro Max. The spokes on the wheel are black which goes nicely with the colour scheme. Shame about the mud guards being silver. Tires are Kenda Quest and here are the inflation specs. Ranges from 40 to 65 psi or 2.8 to 4.5 bar. Tire size is 47 406, 20 by 1.75 if you're interested. So far, they've been okay, rolls along nicely, not much resistance compared to my 29 inch mountain bike tires. Bike comes with mod guards and reflectors as standard, so all you need really are lights if you're going to ride after dark. The seat post has markings to aid you quickly in resetting back to your seat height. I find the seat clamp very good. I haven't ever found it to slide down in use over the two months I've used it. The saddle is very good looking and feels quite padded, but I've found because of the narrow design and in combination with the smaller wheels of the bike, the saddle can get uncomfortable on long rides. I may look at switching it out for a spring suspension type wider saddle is too much of a long-term issue. Something else worthy of mention is the middle folding clamp. It's made entirely of metal and clicks locked when you push it in. So it's very easy to operate even with one hand and it's still secure. When I was researching potential bikes, I read some bikes actually have plastic parts in their folding clamp. So I'm glad it's not the case here. Here is the metal clasp latch, or whatever the word is, that connects to this ball thing on the front wheel. It's very strong and it was initially a faff to connect, but it became easier to engage over time as you get the hang of the alignment and the motion. There's the stand again, very useful, glad it came with one. chain ring guard is double sided and black to match the color scheme. It's a nice touch to save your legs getting oily. This is the luggage rack. Haven't used it for any loads yet, but I think it's essential anyway for somewhere to grab to hold and lift the bike up, as well as for when you're opening the bike. It has these holes which I guess are for bungee cords or something to secure any you know luggage you put on the rack. So as I mentioned earlier the gears needed adjusting out of the box. First I loosened this silver nut and stretched tight the gear cable and then tightened the nut again. Then I used the black barrel nut and the two screws here to adjust the gear indexing. This is the first time I did it after watching some YouTube tutorials, so those are the screws you need if you ever needed to index your gears. I haven't oiled the chain or gears yet as it came with some factory wax already on it, so we'll leave it until it gets wet or drenched before I use oil on it for the first time, as I like it looking clean for now. So 
So I'll just cover the handlebar adjustment quickly. You angle it via this quick release clamp. To adjust the height, it's as easy as using the clamp here. I've read the best height to raise the seat is in line with your hip, so that's where I tend to raise it. You can keep the handlebar higher than the saddle if you want a more upright laid back posture. I tend to keep the handlebars along the same level or just a bit higher than the seat so I can lean forward a bit when riding and it's also easier to have the handlebar at that height if you need to ride standing so that's my preference Overall the bike feels very fun to ride and it's very responsive and actually rides along like a proper non-folding bike. Only thing is the handlebars are a bit shorter than normal bikes so the turning is a bit more twitchy but I soon got used to it. I think the gear ratios over the 8 gears are really good. On the top gear I was found to be cruising along at around 32 km per hour according to my smartwatch so that's not bad. Anyways, now I'm going to end this part of the video and the rest of it will be POV style footage of me riding the bike and me giving my initial impressions. Hope you found this video useful. If so, please consider giving me a thumbs up. Click below. Thanks for watching. So I'm circling away. Hopefully you guys can see so I'm on gear 6, a bit windy today, now you may be able to hear the bell, this bell is quite loose, it's kind of annoying me actually, I have to take it off, every time we go over a bump, it starts, it starts jingling. Feels like I'm riding a Santa Claus's sleigh. Yeah, anyway, so I'm on gear six. That's how you change the gears. And I'm on top gear now. I should should slow down. Brakes are responsive. Sunscreen light. Going up over manhole covers, not bad, handling the bumps alright. Hope you can hear me, a lot of wind heading my way. Some bumps on the road. With these kind of bumps I think I'm going to have to get out of the saddle. handled it with one hand at the moment just to adjust the camera and it's okay handling 
one hand. Just saw Laura driver on his phone there. Luckily we're separated by some solid bike bicycle lanes. Not something we like to see. So I've got my seat up around the same height as my handlebars so that I can ride a bit more aggressively leaning forward. But the beauty with this bike is the handlebar can be adjusted so when you cycle a bit more upright then you just raise the handlebar up a bit so you're sitting up a bit more upright if that's your kind of style but I'm kind of used to riding my other bike is a hybrid bike non-folding and I'm used to riding like this so that's the nice thing about this one so just posting along now downhill brakes are okay slowing me down when I need to going over a manhole cover is under control so into a lower gear now and let's do a bit of rotation. Yeah, gears are moving nicely. Gears takes a bit of you getting used to because it's twist shift. I'm used to like you know triggers, but you know after a while you get into it. And one thing I've noticed. The clasp at the back wheel sometimes clashes with my heels, so that's another thing I need to get used to. Yeah, so for the right, it's been good, comfortable, and uh, it's taken the bumps in quite nicely. You have to get used to the control of the handlebars. They're a bit narrow, they're more narrow than normal bikes. So, every little movement, it's a bit more twitchy. So I've got a hump coming up, some manhole covers. So for really rough terrain, I tend to stand up, which I'm doing now. And this bike is easy enough to cycle standing up as well when you need to, when you need that extra torque. Cool looking cyclist there. Brakes are nice. I've got my handlebars, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got my brakes angled down because in line with my forearm. But if you're sitting up more, then you need to tilt the handlebar up a bit so the levers are straightforward. Another advantage of keeping my levers like this is when it comes to folding it, folding the bike the levers are up then it kind of you can't close the bike properly the levers need to be folded down a bit So I've taken off the wear bell. That was annoying me. I think I need to find a replacement bell. Probably got a black one at home. Uh, which would go nicely with the black handlebar. So yeah, cycling really nicely at the moment. And even though the wheels are like 20 inches, uh, handling the bumps alright. 
but so far, you know, I've been on just smooth cycle lanes, gone over a few like manual covers and stuff. Seemed alright. Obviously, you won't be doing any bunny hops or anything like that onto curbs because the tires do need to be pumped up quite high to a higher pressure because they're so small. Yeah, so turning I think is a bit scary at the moment. I think you need to stay up a bit more upright than a normal bike in order to not fall over. But you know, I've gotten used to it. Oh, now I've got a hill coming up. Let's see how the gears do. So I guess I should speed up first. Get some momentum going. Gear of seven at the moment. Gonna ease back. Gear five. Gear five is too light actually. Let me put it back to six. Taking easy. I'm on gear three now, and yeah, it's helping. Like I said, you can stand up if you want to put some extra pressure on. But for now, that was okay. Nice to have eight gears. So according to my my smartwatch. My average speed is around 20 kilometers an hour, which, you know, is quite nippy. So, yeah. You can see this coming in handy for commutes and going places where you want to take the bike indoors, you know. Where it's a bit dodgy to lock up outside, like we've got a small flat or not a lot of space, and you don't want to keep your bike outdoors. It's really windy today. So at the moment I'm going about 17 to 18 kilometers an hour. So riding with, with one hand is alright as well, you know, it's twitchy but it's not that twitchy that you can't say do something else with one hand if you needed to, but you know I recommend the left hand so you can control the back brake, it's a bad idea to press the front brake when you're just holding it with one hand. Oh. Bumps on the road. I tend to like lift myself up off the saddle a bit when coming across bumps anyway, because although it does cushion it a bit, over time you don't want too much to feel too many bumps. So I'm on top gear now, going downhill, doing 24 kilometers per hour. And uh, yeah, nicely cruising along. So yeah, keeping up with the rest of the cycling traffic. And actually going faster than some as well. So, 
so far so good. I like this tunnel. So yeah, I can see myself using this or commuting to work or something. So doing anything like between three to five miles it would be no sweat. But if I was, was going to be going for a longer ride, say out with the boys somewhere, yeah, I'd probably take my um, full size bike, the hybrid, just because it's over long distances. I can see this becoming uncomfortable. Or you could probably use this for longer journeys if you change the saddle with like a suspension spring type saddle because this bike hasn't got any suspension anywhere and the wheels are small so can't really absorb too much too much vibration from the road well I guess I haven't tried the Bromptons myself but Bromptons have even smaller wheels 16 inch wheels so but some of the higher models do have um, suspension at the back so that kind of balances out. Yes, since hitting the the back clasp metal thing the first few times I've kind of become mindful of it now and haven't hit it anymore. So I guess it just takes getting used to. Yeah, so I, lo I like the fact that you can raise the handlebar. Uh, if you want to go aggressive, lean forward, put your weight on your hands and ride fast and kind of be relaxed. Just stop over, raise the handle, lean back like a, I don't know, Harley Davidson rider and take it easy. coming up to a notorious hill of Tower Hill and let's see how the gears handle it. So yeah, standing up now, standing up and riding, get some talking, handles it nicely, building up speed, 7th gear, out of the 8, now 8 gear, build up a bit of speed, so that it's easy on the uphill. Ease back a bit. Oh, oncoming traffic ruined my momentum. Uh, not to worry, the gears are coming in handy. I'm on six gear at the moment. The incline's getting more, so I'm fifth now. Take it easy. Down to third gear. I'm on gear one now. Yeah, so having eight gears definitely helps. Made it. That's not bad. Go back into gear three. 